<laughs> I love it. Well, thank you so much, Felicia, and thanks everybody for joining me today. We are going to talk about textured wall art. So this is a really cool, popular trend, um, and you're seeing a lot of these nice pieces show up where they are not difficult to make, but they are incredibly expensive. So this is a good hack for you to be able to kind of create some of your own textured wall pieces. Um, a lot of these arches are showing up in a lot of the wall decor too. So this is something that we can do with some modeling paste, some molding paste, and also um, with some acrylic paint. So these are just a couple of examples I'm gonna show you. Some are just pretty simple with just some lines through it, but adding that extra touch of color can help. And it's really something that anyone can do. So just making lines and making these designs on these pieces of wood are gonna be a great way for you to add some touches of decor in your bedroom, in your living room, wherever you think that these might work for you. So what we're gonna to need today is you're gonna need some molding paste. So Golden has some, Liquitex has some, Artist Loft has some, any of those, as long as you check the, um, the jar and make sure that it says modeling paste, molding paste, paste, anything like that is gonna give you that hard surface. Now I have tried this project with lots of different things before. I've seen a lot of people do it with Plaster of Paris. So Plaster of Paris will work, but one thing I wanna caution you about with Plaster of Paris is that the finish you have is a lot more granular and it kind of feels like if you go over it with your hands that it kind of crumbles. So the plaster of Paris gives you a lot of texture, but then it also kind of crumbles. So you might need to seal it. You might need to paint over it or something like that. So what I found to be the best is to have a surface that is wood. The reason why I say to use a wood surface and not just a canvas is because when you take something to scrape across it to make those textured line marks, in a canvas, there's some wiggle room where when you scrape it, it's kind of going to mess up your flow. But if it's a nice hard wood surface or even a canvas panel, that's a panel and not a, a canvas that has the wood backing to it, these are going to work really well. I also have cradled wood. So cradled wood is basically a wooden canvas. And this works very, very well. And then it's pretty easy to hang up with just a pretty easy system on your wall. But the kind that I put on the shopping list for today are these 10 by 10s. They have a really nice hanging hook already, or they have this twine that you can hang on the wall also. So you get two of these in a pack and you can make two different textured wall art pieces and kind of hang them together as a duo and kind of cover more space on your wall. So I'm gonna be working with these two wooden panels today. Um, and I think they're gonna give you a really nice finish. But if you have anything hard, like a canvas panel or another piece of wood or something like that, you can try it with a canvas, but I can't promise you that you're gonna get the results that you want. So let's go ahead and switch over. And you can kind of take a look at what I have over here supplies wise and some of the other things. I have this darker blue earthy one is one that I have hanging on my wall in my bedroom. And so it's just a really nice textured piece again, where I laid down, I did use some of that plaster of Paris and I used a little bit of the modeling paste and kind of really laid down a lot of different textures, some topography. And then I went back with some um, of the metallic paints that I put into the list for today as well and kind of give, you, give it a little bit of that sparkle. And so I love just kind of flowing with the lines. It's a really fun project to do. It's very grounding. So if you need something to help you calm down or chill out, this is a perfect project because it's very grounding. It's very uh, peaceful. It's very relaxing. And there are not a ton of ways to mess up. So with this one too, I went ahead and did it. And then I went back and painted over it to get some of those darker lines and some of the lighter lines. So you can do this in one fast swoop, literally make a swoop and be done. Or you can also um, go back afterwards. Like with this white one that I have right here, now that I have this laid down and I did use plaster of Paris for this one, I can go back with my paintbrush and I can paint on the raised parts or I can paint in between and make some really cool arch or um, rainbow designs as well. So you will need some modeling paste. You will need some acrylic paint. I put this metallic set because I love the metallic colors. 
And then you're also going to need something I bet you didn't expect, which are these icing combs. So these icing combs are in the baking aisle, and they're of course meant for cakes, but why should they not be meant for fine art as well? So what's nice about these is that they have all these different edges that can give you different textures of lines. This is a pretty classic one, this dark blue one I have with this arch. And that one's done with these teeth that are really separated pretty far to give you those gaps and give you that really nice arch. But then if you have something like this one where the arch lines are closer together, you can use these teeth that are kind of like a serrated edge and you can just get even more lines. What's great about the textured art is that it does have texture. So it really gives it something interesting. Even if you paint something in white, it's still interesting. So it can blend into any living decor that you have with just a basic white, but still give you something interesting and something that looks expensive, but is not that expensive to create. So I'm clearing these out. And like I told you, I have two of those cradled or two of those wooden signs. They're 10 by 10. I'm definitely covering my space because I don't want to get anything messy on my table. And I have this 10 by 10 wood surface. It has this nice hanger on the back. It has this nice piece of twine. And I already took some gesso and I already put down a layer of gesso paint. So you don't have to put a layer of gesso. You can use the natural wood, whether it, it's a dark wood or a whitewashed wood. You can leave whatever natural color is on this wood and you can let that be kind of revealed. So imagine that when you're taking your marking tools and you're making these marks, you're gonna reveal what's underneath. So what's underneath can be painted, what's underneath can be natural, what's underneath can be this gesso. And gesso is basically the primer of arts and crafts. So it gives you a really nice, good, clean finish. It can cover up something. So if you wanna upcycle, you can take a canvas or a piece of wood or something that you already have something on and gesso over it in order to uh, have a new surface to play with. So what I'm gonna do with my two wooden pieces today is I am going to paint one of them with an undercoat that will reveal and I'm gonna leave one of them with the white gesso. So I'm gonna paint the undercoat first so that we can kind of put it to the side and let it dry while we're working on our next one. So I'm gonna check in the chat and see if there's any questions so far. I don't see any, but let me know if you have anything you wanna add or anything you wanna ask about. Oh, I have one more example I can show you too. This is on a canvas panel and this is just a nice teal paint and just really cool lines. So it's just nice. Not only that, but it has a really cool texture. So once it does dry, it's very relaxing and it's very soothing, kind of like a Zen garden for your brain. So I'm gonna paint with this copper color um, and I'm gonna leave a dark copper on the bottom of this. I'm gonna let it dry. I'm gonna put it to the side. And then when I come back and do the textured part over top of it, by adding the modeling paste, you're going to get more white. So it's gonna make a lighter version of the copper. So for now, I'm just gonna paint this base with my copper. Find a big paintbrush and just get a nice base coat of this copper. You can go along the sides if you wanna make sure that the sides have that nice copper on it also but I really love these metallic paints. It's Artist Loft um, and you can get a set. I think they're a set of six of them and they have these really nice colors. Besides the silver and the copper, there's also like a metallic green and a metallic blue that I really liked a lot too. So I'm gonna make a nice base coat on this one and then I'm gonna set it off to the side. And when I start the next one, I'm going to go straight into the texture part on the next one while this is drying. So those of you who are watching along with me right now, I'd love your opinion about what color we should do on the second piece. So do you want a light blue? Do you want a metallic -y teal? Do you want a green? 
So give me blue, teal, or green in the chat. Let me know which one you want to see that goes on my other piece of 10 by 10 wood. And what's nice about the one I'm painting right now is that I'm going to cover it up. So it definitely doesn't have to be perfect. But I really like this color I have so far with this copper. I'm definitely going to set it to the side and let it dry while we work on our next piece. So let me check what you're saying. If it's going to be light blue, if it's going to be. So what I can see, it looks like it's, it's teal. All right. But I do see someone that's asking, could you mix it? Mix. Yeah, I like that idea too. So the next thing on our list of supplies was also something called palette paper. So throwing things. Palette paper um, kind of reminds me of wax paper, but it's obviously different. And it is great for acrylic paints and it's easy for cleaning up. So it's paper. So when I'm done, I can just throw it away and not have to worry about anything. So it's a nice cleanup as opposed to any of those um, palettes that have the wells that you have to wait until they dry and then you clean them all out and get all the gunk out of them. But the palette paper is nice for this project particularly because we're going to scoop out and we're going to be using a palette knife. I also, close to my desk that I'm working on right here, I have like a one of those plastic shoe boxes and it has about two inches of water in it. So what I'm using that for is my brushes. And when I start using these combs, I'm gonna put these combs into that water to kind of clean them out as I'm going. Um, you don't wanna put that water directly down the sink because it will have modeling paste in it, which isn't going to be good for your sewer system, but I'm going to collect it kind of in this rinse bucket and then you can throw the water out outside and then the rinse part that's in the bottom, what's being collected of this modeling paste, you can then use a paper towel and clean it out and throw it away. So here we go. You're going to take one of your modeling paste jars and I like to use disposable spoons just in case I forget to clean them up or in this case, I'm gonna use a fork. And I'm going to get myself a good glob and go ahead and put that onto the palette. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit and then I'm gonna put the lid on this because it is going to dry. Um, I would say it dries within an hour, but to be safe, I would leave your textured wall art pieces to dry for overnight. And then, we're going to go with the metallic teal. So it does not take a lot of paint. It takes a lot of the modeling paste, but it doesn't take a lot of paint. So I see a question, the water won't stain grass or dirty. So the way that I've done this before is, um, it depends on where you dump it. So do be careful about where you're dumping it. But what I'm trying to keep from doing is getting that paste down the sink. So if you can get rid of the water, first and then the paste settles in the bottom and then from there you can go ahead and get rid of the paste into the trash rather than down a sewer sink. All right I have just basically one or two drops and I'm just gonna have fun mixing this up. It feels like you're kind of baking which makes sense since I'm using icing combs and you can imagine that all the fun that food crafters have with their icing is the same kind of fun we can have with this modeling paste. I've been seeing a lot of those fake cakes. I don't know if anybody else has seen those on Instagram and different places. Tell that this already lightened this color a lot because the modeling paste itself is white. So this teal really went for a light blue. So those of you who were rooting for light blue, you might have won also. But I'm going to add a little bit more because I do want it a little bit darker than this. And if you want it two colors or if you wanted to try something different where you have two different sections of two different tints or two different shades, you could also do that. But I'm just mixing this up real good and I happen to be using this plastic fork, but you could also be using your palette knife. Whatever makes most sense for you, feel free to do that. And I'm making sure that there's no white patches and that everything's pretty nice and mixed in. And I think 
I'm gonna take another dab. So I'm probably at about three or four drops of the paint because I want that color to kind of get darker. And Megan, while you're doing that, sure. I was asking, all of your pictures are single are single colors. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> can one of your multiple colors um, on the can? Can you put multiple colors on the canvas or will it just turn muddy when uh, you put the palette knife through? Great question. I would definitely um, stick to colors that are going to work well together. So like blues, yellows um, can go together. And if they happen to make a green, that's still fine. But I would stick to colors that kind of work in that same story um, so that you don't get a lot of brown. Because, yeah, I think with the mixing, there will be more um chance for it to be brown. So this paste is found in the fine arts aisle of Michael's right next to there's like usually sections that have all the different types of mediums. So there are mediums which go along with your acrylic paints to do different things. So there's some mediums that make your paints nice and runny so that you could do paint pouring. There's some mediums that make it gel like so that when it finishes it has this nice sheen to it. And then the particular kind of medium we're using today is a modeling paste. And so it's gonna keep that structure. It's gonna stay like paste, like toothpaste. It's gonna dry and it's gonna harden and it's gonna stay three-dimensional. It's not going to drop down. So I have my palette paper full of this beautiful um, teal metallic paint. And then I'm going to not so carefully and not so cleverly just transfer a bunch of this paste. And again, this is kind of just like me having fun with this craft, trying not to get too terribly messy, but still having fun with it. And it's like icing or like making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So it's actually quite relaxing and quite fun to feel these textures and play with this modeling paste on top of this wooden surface. So I'm scraping this off of my paper. And at this point too, I could have different colors or different shades of the blue that I'm putting down. But when I'm spreading them again, you're gonna wanna be careful that you don't just spread them um, and make a lot of browns depending on what your colors are. So I'm giving us a good surface, a good peanut butter spread here and moving that paint around. See, I don't think I'm gonna need to make any more, but if at some point you need to make another glob, and kind of match your paint. It's nice to keep track of things like how many globs of the blue paint you used so that your next color you can kind of match it or do the best you can to match it. But like some of you are saying it would might be nice to have a second color and not match it on purpose. So I'm going to see if I can spread this all the way across and you're welcome to be as generous as you want with the amount you put on because you're going to be scraping some of it back off. And again, I don't even need to make this super smooth. So you can see that I already have some ridges and that's fine because that's part of the process and that's going to make some cool textures. If I make it perfectly smooth, it's going to be a little bit too perfect on purpose. And kind of the point of the textured wall art is that it looks kind of rustic or looks kind of natural. So you don't need it to be super perfect. You want to have some of those cracks. You want to have some of those lines to really give you something interesting to look at. So remember on this particular piece, I didn't do an underpainting. I just have that white gesso layer. So when I reveal some of these lines, you're going to see that gesso layer show up. So I'm just going to do a classic arch design on this one. And I'm going to use this big tooth icing comb. And for the most part, this color is going to dry about the same color that you see right now. So it shouldn't change. It will get hard. Um, and like I said, the modeling paste isn't very crumbly. So it actually does a pretty good job of staying together, whereas the plaster of Paris gets a little crumbly. So here's the moment you're waiting for. I'm going to kind of pivot from this corner down here. And I'm going to take this icing comb and I'm going to drag it across. Ooh. And you're going to get this really cool arch effect. I can stop right here and love that. 
<laughs> because I'm really happy with that. I love the way it looks. And um, I hope that I was paying attention. I was good to where the top is. So for me, here's my top because that's where I have this. But just that one swoop of that arch and you can see some of the gesso showing through. So you can tell that this can make lots of different things. On this arch, I used a very dark color and then put a lighter um, tint over top with the modeling paste so that a dark shows through. But in this case, I have a little bit of that white showing through and I really like the way that is. So this is kind of the messy part. I've collected this modeling paste. You can use your, um, your palette knife to kind of scrape this down and collect it and use it again on another piece. You're welcome to do that. Again, do not put this, I don't recommend putting this into your sink to wash out, which is why I kind of have this water bucket nearby that I'm gonna kind of take it and shake this into to get some of that gunk off. And then I definitely have a lot of paper towels and a lot of napkins nearby while I'm doing this. So I'm shaking it into my water bucket in case you're wondering what I'm doing. And then I'm gonna take it out of my water bucket and I'm gonna use a napkin to kind of take off some more of that excess. So if I need to use the same tool, I can do it again. And also you definitely don't want the modeling paste to be drying in between all of your teeth because that's gonna make it not possible for you to use this as well again. So this is the first one. And honestly, I'm happy with this and I am gonna leave this exactly as it is. And I'm gonna set it off to dry Definitely an hour, but I'm going to leave it overnight before I do any hanging, do anything else to it. But I love about this is I love this natural piece up here that's not perfectly smooth because it gives us more to look at. I love this arch. Those teeth did their job. They really moved the stuff around. And then we're going to have some nice raised pieces. So I love this. I'm going to put it to the side and I'm going to grab the copper. So by now, Copper has had a chance to dry. Oh, <laughs> do you see my fingerprints? I was gonna say just how dry it is, but that's kind of a lie. So I probably could wait a little bit longer, but because we're together here live right now, I'm gonna go for it. What could happen, because I'm not completely waiting for this to dry yet, what could happen is when I do my scraping, I might scrape away some of the copper and you might see some of the white too. So you just never know. This is going to be a fun reveal. We'll see how it does and we'll go from there. So with this one, I am going to put a lighter copper on top of this darker copper. So I'm going to move my teal um, paint palette paper to the side. I might use that again later. So I'm going to kind of keep it on a table next to me and I'm going to use a different piece of palette paper and I'm going to use some more modeling paste and create like a lighter copper color. So I'm gonna scoop out some of this using one of my palette knives. And I'm gonna do a little bit more than I did last time just so I have plenty to work with. And um, just kind of some information. I think that you could with a, um, I think I've measured it before that with a eight ounce jar, you can do at least three or four of these 10 by 10s. So this one eight ounce fluid ounce jar um, should be good for several pieces. And if you have a little bit of a bigger jar, you can do bigger pieces or you could do even more of those 10 by 10s. So I have some of the modeling paste. I'm gonna close that up so that I don't dry it out. And I'm gonna add the copper. I'm gonna start out with just about a little squirt, probably a squirt and a half. <laughs> That's my measurement. And then I'm gonna have fun really blending this in. I love this part, it's so fun. And I can decide how much more copper I want to add. If I want it to remain really light, if I want it to get closer match to color, however I want to do that. But I have more than enough to be able to cover the surface. I am gonna add a little bit more darker. So 
So that's my second squirt. Yeah, so somebody asked in the chat if you don't mix it completely and you leave it streaky, that's another fun look too. So yes, you absolutely do not have to mix it all into one uniform color. You can leave it streaky and that's gonna give you a cool look too. Just remember that when you spread it over, you might end up spreading those streaks in. So you do need to be careful with that. It might not stay the way that you intend it. So I feel like this is pretty good so far. I'm gonna start putting it onto my wooden sign. And really taking those spoonfuls or palette knife fulls of material and starting to spread them around. And how would you feel adding glitter to it? Oh my God. I was thinking about that, Felicia, because um, I think even better than glitter, um, on something like this one I showed you before, because there's so many raised surfaces and just some interesting lines and textures, if you take gold leaf and put down some gold leaf, and brush away the extras, it's just going to make those textures stand out even more. So I think gold leaf, even more than glitter, could be really, really fun to try out. You'll have to let me know if anybody tries it out. I want to know how it goes. And feel free to share any of your pictures. Um, you can tag us at Learn with Michaels, or you can use the hashtag Learn with Michaels, and you can show me what you make. It looks like icing, right? <laughs> it really does. There we go. So I'm just giving myself a nice smooth surface. And then this time I'm gonna play with some of the smaller lines or the lines that are closer together. If you don't have these icing combs, another good example of something to use would be just honestly, a plastic fork. A plastic fork has enough interesting um, lines that it could create also that I think you'd be happy with that design as well. So you can decide if you want to put some of the texture on your side. Um, it really depends on where you're gonna hang it if you want that to go onto the side or not. But I'm giving myself a nice base coat of this tinted modeling paste that I tinted with acrylic paint. <laughs> this is making me hungry for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Don't eat the paint. I mean, I just need to say that <laughs> since I'm talking so much about food. All right. So again, I'm trying on purpose not to make it perfect because I like the textures. It gives it more of a rustic feel, more of a natural feel. So I like what's happening here. Absolutely, old combs will definitely work. If anyone has ever been into jelly plates, jelly, um, the jelly company make their own plates that go with, literally it's a little gelatin plate that you do printmaking with. So if you have any of these tools from the jelly plate, you can definitely use those on these as well. Um, if you have any other sets that have any kind of marking, even a putty knife from the hardware store, um, there might be some knives too next to the putty knives that have some different design elements as well. So it said, I missed that part about, can you just tap? Oh yes, so that's a great question. And I'll point that out after this too. So if you don't wanna do lines, if you don't wanna do lines and you don't wanna do streaks, you can actually paint with this textured paint as well. Something else I've seen done that I think is really fantastic is you lay down a stencil, you put this coat over top of it, spread it out like how I just did, let it dry and peel that stencil or peel that stencil and then let it completely dry. And it'll leave that stencil with that textured paint. And so you can have like wildflowers or something that have that texture to it. I could also, if I wanted to take some artificial ferns or flowers or something at this point and press them down kind of like a memory stone sort of situation. And then I would take it back out and let the impression kind of dry and then maybe go back with acrylic paint or maybe not depending on how you like it. 
So I'm going to use um, some smaller tools this time, I think. Hey, man, can you repeat how long it takes it for it to dry? To dry, yeah. I would say that within an hour, it should be pretty dry, but I wouldn't really mess with it or hang it up or do anything um, too much until just let it dry overnight. So let's see, I'm going to use... I'm gonna just show you what some of these other um, cake combs can do. So this is a nice scalloped edge. And instead of doing like my arch, maybe I just start somewhere and kind of drag this along. And so that gave me some like small lines close together, then spaces, then small lines close together. And you can decide if you like that or not. What's also great, is that, like I said, you can collect some of this extra paste. And if you already don't like your design, um, there's an easy erase button here. You can just re-spread out your modeling paste and try again. So it's kind of one of those nice things too. I think you probably have a good 20 minutes before it gets too hard to try again. Um, but you do have that time where you can kind of play around and see what you like. Something that I'm thinking about is like with these smaller tools. So with these smaller tools, you can do some of this like go for a while and then turn and then turn, go for a while and then turn. So it's sometimes nice to use some of these smaller pieces to kind of get you a different kind of design that you might not get with the larger piece. And then maybe I even cross through that And it is, it's like a Zen garden. So this is a totally different look, just really quick. And you can decide if you like that, if you want it to stay or if you wanna wipe that away. I can go back with that smaller tool and kind of go over top. And I like that a lot too. So imagine if I did this in white or even with the color I have it in now and I let it dry, you might go back and kind of hit some of those color spots with a darker acrylic. And you can decide, it's kind of a minimalist sort of thing, so you might not want to overkill, but you can decide if you feel like it needs maybe a little bit more here or there. But it is kind of a less is more kind of situation with these. So you can like that and you can keep going with that, or I think I'm gonna wipe it up and show you another one, because why not? Let's play around. So I'm gonna re-spread some of my modeling paste. Or if you have a section you like, you can keep that section and spread the rest of it. So you can keep going, kind of clear up any mistakes that you might think or designs that you're not quite into and see what happens from there. So I like the idea too of doing kind of checkered and getting a thin texture. So maybe you start with a comb like this and maybe I drag across to make this lay down of lines. I'm gonna collect some of this extra modeling paste and put it back onto my palette paper. Oops, I got a lot of extra. And then let's see, what do I think I wanna do? I think I wanna do Kind of like a sunrise almost. So I see a question that says, what's the best way to see the bottom color? Because some of you remember I used a dark copper on the bottom of this. And I would say that the best way to get that dark copper to really pull through is to use something that has like these kind of combs where it has a lot of those blank spaces so that you can see that copper come up. So let me get this a little closer so you can kind of see how that's doing. And I can't stop, can't stop myself. So I'm gonna keep going. I used to teach math. So the geometry of this too is like right up my alley. I just love this craft. So I think I'm preferring some curves 
rather than some straight lines today. And I really like this look. So I think I'm gonna stay with this one and I'm gonna let this one dry off to the side too. So I do have just a little bit more time if we wanna try one more together. I think I saw some people say they were interested in green. So let me put this to the side so that it can dry. And there was a couple of questions that um, we can- Yeah, kinda... I guess I'm not on the chat because my hands are getting dirty. <laughs> You're right. Tell me what's up. There is a question asking you if you can use, or do you think talc adhesive would work oh. like the modeling paste? Say it again, talc adhesive? Mm-hmm, tile adhesive. Tile adhesive. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, so yes, in the I've been to the hardware store before and gotten those little jars of putty. Um, I don't know what they're called. I think they're called putty. I don't know if that's the same as what you're talking about. But yes, I have used those. And yes, they work really well. Um, again, do it on a hard surface, like a wood surface and not um, a canvas. Because when you drag that tool, it sags and you're not going to be able to get really nice lines. But yes, I have used that before and you can add tint to those putties and add tint to Plaster of Paris the same way I'm doing it with this modeling paste. Excellent the, question. The other question was, must you cover the whole piece with a second layer? No, absolutely not. So maybe on this last one, let's go wild and we'll do a couple different colors and we'll do a couple of different techniques that some people are curious about. We'll kind of experiment and see this together. So this is my little water bin. I told you it's just a little plastic um, shoe box sort of thing. And I'm using this water to kind of get this modeling paste off of the cone. And then I will use a um, paper towel also to dry this and to get as much of that modeling paste off as I can. And it does tend in this bucket, it tends to separate itself. So usually the water is at the top and the paste goes to the bottom so that when I was dumping it, I could keep myself from dumping the paste. So I'm wiping down this tool with my paper towel or my napkin and put that to the side. I also just have a brush floating from when I painted the copper background. So I can clean that out, keep it on my station next to me. I'm going to put this palette paper to the side because we're going to start with a new color palette. And this comb, I think, is okay still, but I can just kind of give it a good rinse. You can tell that these combs have been well loved already. And some days I do a better job of cleaning up after myself <laughs> than others, which is why there's some, some memories of previous times I've played with these combs. And here's my palette knife. I'm getting some of that extra off of it too, so that I can reuse these tools and keep it from drying. All right. We're going to do one last piece together. Of course, I have one more tool. Sorry. Let me just take a moment to clean. <laughs> Can you use a heat gun to speed it up? Great question. I don't know what heat will do to it. I haven't tried that. But what I do have um, next to me is kind of a desk fan. So that desk fan is doing the best it can to help me dry some of the acrylic paint and to dry some of the modeling paste a little bit faster. So I do know that a fan can help. I don't know if a heat gun will work in the same way that it might on something else. But if you try that, let me know if it works, I'll be very curious. Okay, I'm ready. So I have another canvas panel and it does already have a layer of gesso on it. And so we're gonna play around with this one and see what kind of experimentation we wanna do. So I'll pull out some palette paper and we'll mix up starting with some green And I'm going to try two different tiles this time. <laughs> Decided that 
on the spot, which is why my piles are kind of connected. Close that up. And then I'm gonna take some green. And I'm gonna put a squirt of green into this first one and see what I can do. I think this color is pretty dark. And I have a little less modeling paste in this pile. So that's giving us a really nice emeraldy green. I like that one. And then in this next pile, I'm gonna kind of stay with that same color. So I'm gonna put some of that emerald green over here, but then I'm gonna add something else to it. So I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow and I'm gonna make this a little bit more yellowy green. But by using that same green in it, it's gonna kind of keep it in the same family. So these two colors are gonna look pretty nice next to each other. And we'll see if it ends up being dramatically different or not. We'll see when the mixing happens. But you can tell that this one's a little bit more lime or mint, and the other one's a little bit more emerald. Kind of like that. So when I spread these, I'm gonna try and spread them into some different sections and we'll have some crossover. And because they're eventually going to mix, I don't think it really matters if I do this. So I can tell a little bit of color difference. Hopefully on your screen, you can tell that too. And just for fun, I have a little bit of this copper from before. So we'll add some dramatic copper. I don't know what's going to happen. We'll find out together. So someone was asking before too about textured painting. So you, there is a technique of painting with these palette knives where you just lay them down. So if you just lay these little swoops down, then you can have a whole bunch of just texture just by adding some little swoops. And so that's kind of its own texture if you don't wanna do lines or if you don't wanna use the combs, just by me kind of flicking my wrist around and making almost like waves. And when it dries, you're gonna have that extra 3D texture. Yeah, so these swoops are looking pretty cool. So it's just really fun to play around with this. And that one jar of modeling paste can go a long way. And so now I'm kind of seeing some of this copper streak in, which I like. And I'm just playing with these textures and playing with the swoops. So this particular palette knife is kind of like a diamond shape. So it makes some nice shapes. There are different palette knives that are shaped differently. Some of them are more spoon-like, so they could give you a different kind of petal feel to it. And I can keep that copper as a kind of accent piece or I can kind of swirl, swirl it around. It is a lot like impasto, yes. So impasto, the difference between what we're doing today and impasto painting is that impost, impasto uses a high thick gel acrylic medium and we're using a paste, but sometimes people doing um, impasto do use the paste as well. But the paste gives more of like, this won't crumble nearly as much as the plaster of Paris would, but it's kind of a crumblier texture, whereas a, a gel medium, is gonna have like a sheen to it. So when this, finishes, you'll kind of still be able to see some of those uh, shiny parts, the way that it's kind of shining right now. I love this. <laughs> what do you guys think? Should I keep going or should I leave it? I kind of love it. Maybe a little more copper somewhere else. I was thinking the same thing. I was like, she's, she's taking all the way the copper. <laughs> I know. She, she doesn't want the copper. Okay. 
put some more in there. That's why I keep all my extras. A good crafter, you know, doesn't throw anything away. There's some more why we end up with so much left over. Correct. <laughs> Correct. I love that. I love it. When this dries, I'm really interested in trying that gold leaf on it to see if I can get that to work because this has such nice textures that it would just be so cool. It's almost could be leaves. It could be flowers. It's just giving me lots of really good, almost peacock vibes too with the copper and with the green. Will so, you be hearing this on your Instagram page? Yeah, I will definitely put this on my Instagram page. So 4M Coleman is my personal Instagram. And then Learn With Michaels is the Instagram that we show off lots of people's things. So if you do happen to make it, somebody saying they want to use copper with black. Oh my goodness. Yes. Or black and silver. Yes, please. So let me know. Show me. If you tag Learn With Michaels, I'll be able to repost it or share it or just see it if you just want me to see it. So I am so happy with this. I'm going to pull back the other ones so that you can kind of remember all the different things that we did together today. So we have this little lovely palette knife painting. We also have our original, which is lovely, with this really nice arch. And it's doing a good job of drying. I can touch it. It's not tacky. So just within this time, it's actually pretty dry. But again, I'm going to leave it overnight before I do anything else with it. And then I have my copper piece from before that I couldn't decide what I wanted, but I love, I love the way that looks. It's kind of like an optical illusion with those circles kind of intersecting each other. So I'm going to hang these. I'm going to let them dry. I'm going to take some nice pictures and share them on 4M Coleman. And if you make anything, please tag me or let me know. And it was so nice. So does this work with handprints? Yes. Messy hands, be careful. But yeah, it can work with a lot of those things, any of those kind of impressions or memory stone kind of things you can do with this modeling paste also. So you do not need to seal them. Um, once they're done, they're done. If you use plaster of Paris instead of using um, the modeling paste I suggested, I do think you should probably seal it because it gets pretty crumbly. I don't know where I put that one. Um, so you might want to paint over top of it and then seal it one last time so that it doesn't fall or if somebody touches it, it doesn't kind of crumble away. So be careful with that. But thank you so much for joining me today. Um, it was really fun. A paw print. Yes. Oh my gosh. Someone said in the chat, that is a great idea. What a lovely memory. So thanks for coming. Tomorrow I'll be teaching a class using a new kind of marker. Um, Sharpie came out with a new paint pen called the Sharpie Creative Marker um, that is really good. <laughs> No one's paying me to say that. It's really good. So we're going to make trinket trays tomorrow. So join me and also some kindness rocks. I love painting rocks. If you look at my Instagram, you'll see that too. So um, feel free to join me tomorrow. And if you have a chance to grab some of these Sharpie markers, I think you'll be impressed with them. So we're going to play around with those tomorrow. And um, this will be up on YouTube so that you can watch it again and try again. Thanks for coming, everyone. See you.